What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about the bevel modifier and how you can use it to round off edges and corners inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So last week we talked a little bit about the bevel tool inside of Blender. This week I want to talk about the bevel modifier and in a little bit we'll talk about the difference, um, why you would use one over the other. But let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the bevel modifier and what it can do. So you can apply the bevel modifier by going over here to this menu and finding the modifier properties function. And then you can click on that and you can use this to apply it to your object. So we're going to click on add modifier and it's going to be the second option under generate. And so what bevel is going to do is it's going to take your edges and it's going to bevel them off. And basically what it does is it, it removes material on your edges and also on your corners. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on um, wireframe mode so you can see what it's doing to the geometry inside of this model. And so what this is going to do is it's going to basically um, remove material at your corners and edges um, based on an offset that you select and also a number of segments. So you can see how you can adjust the size of the offset and this will bevel this down further and further. And if you take it all the way down you can see how what this is going to do is it's basically going to bring all of your edges to points. So you can use this in order to adjust the bevel that you've applied in here. And so as a general rule, you start by setting this as a distance, right? So you can set this by like 0.1 meters. You can type in a value as well. So to set the size of your bevel, but you can also adjust it by other options. So for example, right now, this is beveling this as an offset from where your original edge was. However, if you were to set this to width, what this will do is this allows you to set the width of the bevel that's created. So there's also an option in here for depth, which is going to be your perpendicular depth from where your edge was before, as well as percent. So you can bevel this based on a percentage. So you can bevel this by 50% or 10%, really whatever you want. And generally speaking, I usually end up using the offset function, but these other functions are in here as well. So there's a few other options in here that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I do want to draw your attention to this only vertices option. If you check that, then all this is going to do is bevel off your corners or your vertices rather than your edges. So you can set this to bevel only your vertices. So we'll talk about these others in a second, but now let's take a look at the number of segments you can add in here. And so basically what the number of segments is going to do is that's going to increase segment. The more segments, the rounder your bevel is going to be, but also the more geometry you're going to be create. So you want to be a little bit careful that you don't create a ton of geometry in here that you don't really need. But notice that you can use this in order to either just bevel this off just as a single um, a single pass or the more segments you create the more this is going to be rounded so you can use the bevel modifier in order to do that so the profile function is going to set if your bevels go out or in so 0.5 means this is going to be round. If we were to drag this to the left though, you can see how this is going to take your bevels inside instead of outside. So not only can you use this to bevel your objects to the outside, you can also bevel them to the inside. And you can see how if you take this all the way to the right with your profile right here, then you're going to get a very minor bevel. So you can see how again, it's only taking the edges here. So this is actually adding in the geometry, um, but then it's also only really beveling off this edge right here. Usually you're going to leave this at 0.5, but you can adjust it to adjust the way this is beveled. So the material function is going to allow you to apply a different material to your beveled edges. So let's say, for example, that I had a material in here, like I have a material 005 that has a red color associated with it. Well, within my modifier, if I adjust this, so if I was to click this arrow right here, you can see how as I apply or as I flip through this, you can apply different materials that have been applied to your object. So, or different materials that have been added to your object to your beveled edges. So if you were to set this to something other than negative one, what it's going to do is it's going to apply a material to anything that you're beveling. So that's something to be aware of. Um, I don't necessarily use this a whole lot, but it's definitely in here as an option. And so one thing I want to point out with this modifier is let's say that we were to take this object and hit tab to go into edit mode. Notice how you get the wireframe of this box in here. That's because this modifier isn't actually um, creating new geometry. Um, it's acting like all your other modifiers do in the sense that it's keeping your original object in here. So your original object is editable. So let's say for example I was to select this vertex and then adjust it. You can see how your uh, bevel is going to adjust with 
this modifier. So this hasn't actually been applied, so the actual geometry isn't in it's not in your model here, this is more of a visual thing. And you can always turn that off by clicking on the little monitor right here so this isn't shown in real time. So you can see what your actual object still looks like. So now let's take a look at another example and kind of take a look at the way that the, the modifier tool works. So if we, uh, if we add this modifier, if we bevel this, you're gonna notice that since we had like two boxes on top of each other, so we've got a box here and a box here, this is beveling the outside edges down, but then it's also beveling the intersection between these two objects right here to give you a smooth transition. So if you add the number of segments in here, you can see how you can use this to create a smooth transition between different shapes. So almost as if these were kind of merging into each other organically. You can use this um, on shapes like this in order to create that more realistic shape. And one thing to note about this is let's go ahead and take a look at this option for clamp overlap. By default the clamp overlap is on but if you remember before what happens is if you drag this offset really far to the right you hit a certain point where it's not beveling any further. That's because we've told it once we kind of bevel this so that our edges um, overlap stop beveling this so no matter how much I add to this it's not going to make any changes. If you uncheck that box for clamp overlap. Say, for example, that I had this at point one, I turned off clamp overlap and then I drag this to the right. You can see how you get some kind of weird results. This is going to take this and it's going to bevel it too far. So you can see how the geometry that's created is now going, it's kind of overlapping. So this clamp overlap is gonna be really important to keep you from getting that weird result. So usually I leave that set no matter what I'm doing. And so the other thing I wanna talk about is right now, if you were to take a shape like this one and you were to apply the bevel modifier to it, you can see how this is made up of quads. So it's good geometry, but if you were to apply the bevel modifier to this, you can see how this isn't only bevel off the edges it's also beveling um, it's also beveling the lines between the different edges and so what that means is as I add segments instead of this giving me this kind of like nice rounded off shape in here it's adding a whole bunch of extra geometry well the way to fix that so that this only bevels off the edges is you can actually limit your bevel based on the angle of the different objects. So you can see how right now, for example, so if I set this to angle to zero, you're getting a whole bunch of extra created geometry in here and things just get kind of weird. Um, but if you were to turn this angle up, what this is gonna do is it's gonna check, it's gonna check the angle between faces and only bevel edges that are over a certain angle. So you can see how if I drag this down to like, seven, for example, I'm getting all this extra geometry in here, but as soon as I drag this up above 10, then now all of these edges are not getting beveled anymore. You're only getting bevels along the edges on the top, which gives you a much smoother, better shape. So, and then you can kind of adjust the overall using your profile. You can also adjust your segments in here as well. And you can see how you're getting a much better result based on this angle limit. So be aware that if you're getting a whole lot of geometry that you don't necessarily want, use this angle limit method in order to keep it from creating all that extra geometry where, or these edges are between the faces. So I will note that you can also come in here and apply a custom profile. So right now, for example, this is flat, but you could add points in here on your bevel. So you can see how I'm able to use this and what I need to do is I need to add a number of segments in order to do this, but you can use the custom profile tool, which I'm gonna do a whole video on later on this week, but you can use this custom profile tool in order to add detail to this shape. And just notice that you need to have the right number of segments in here for this to work, right? If you set this to one segment, it doesn't matter what your custom profile is because there's just not enough vertices and, uh, and edges in here in order to create the shape that we're trying to create. But as I add segments, you can see how what this is doing is this is adding detail um, to this custom profile. Profile. So you can use this custom profile in order to do a lot of different things. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about when you would use the modifier and when you would use the actual tool. So if you remember last week, we talked about the actual tool. And what the actual tool does is it allows you to select um, any number of edge loops that you want to. So let's say, for example, that I was to select this loop, this loop, in this loop and I could do a control B 
in order to bevel off these edges. And remember that you can scroll your mouse wheel up in order to create those actual edge loops. And so what this does is the actual tool allows me to select individual edges. So for example, there's not really any way to apply the modifier just to an edge that I'm aware of over here, but you can bevel your individual edges over here. Um, one thing to be aware of though is when you do use the bevel tool, um, you are actually changing the geometry inside of your model, so you can't just turn it off like you can with the modifier. Um, however, what this does is this gives you some really interesting options for doing things like if I was to place an edge right here, and I was to bevel that off, I could use this to add geometry to my face. And all that geometry is now editable. So I can come in here, for example, and I could select this and maybe this, and I could extrude this outward. So what the bevel tool so what the bevel tool does is it creates editable geometry. On the other hand, what the modifier does is it'll take an object and it'll bevel everything inside of that object. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn up my I'm gonna turn up my angle a little bit just so this isn't beveling everything off. But you can see how what this does is this takes all of your edges and it bevels them really quickly. Um, and you can adjust this so that all of your different edges can be beveled. Um, but one thing to note is if I was to turn this off or turn the visibility of this off, my original shape is still in here um, as the simple shape that I had in here before. So this isn't actually creating geometry that you can use in order to edit, right? So I can't like select this edge loop um, in the one that I'm using the modifier for. So if I was to tab into this, you can see how you can select the edge loop, but what it's selecting is it's selecting your individual object and allowing you to edit that. It's not actually selecting the geometry created by the modifier. Um, so what the modifier does is this allows you to keep your shape simple, and you can turn this on and off, um, and you can make changes to your original. But if you need this geometry or something like that, you may want to think about using the bevel tool. So what you can do though, is you can use this and then once you're done with it, you can apply the changes and I need to be in object mode in order to do that. But now if I go back in here, this is actually editable geometry. So what you can do is you can use the modifier tool in order to create the geometry that you want and apply it. Just note though that when you do that, that's kind of final, meaning that you can't come back in here and make any changes to this anymore. It's actually created the geometry at that point. So for quick rounding off of your edges and um, um, handling all of your edges at once, I recommend the modifier. If you're trying to use the bevel tool in order to create geometry or to bevel off individual edges at once, I would recommend using the tool instead. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been using the um, bevel modifier? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.